obsessed with TLC and all the trashy reality TV. It's, it's a, a recap. recap. It's, it's a, a recap. recap. It's a recap. Welcome back, everyone. I know you're so excited to talk about Love After Lockup, as am I. So let's just get right into the recap. We are going to talk about episode five, Felons for Life. Let's start with Justine and Michael. Now, remember how they got into that big fight at his welcome back party? Justine and Michael get a chance to talk about it after, and they're sitting down in their dining table, and Justine basically tells him that she doesn't regret anything that she said. She just regrets the timing. And she tells Michael, look, I'm willing to apologize to your mom, but I expect an apology back from her too. Mm, I don't think that's how apologies work, Justine. If you want to apologize for something, like if you're sorry for something that you did, you should just apologize, period. You shouldn't really expect something back. That doesn't make sense, but whatever. Anyway, she does apologize to Michael for ruining his party, and then he reassures her that he's on her side. I thought that was a really great moment for them. It's obvious that they definitely support each other. And I gotta say, I was very impressed with Michael here, his willingness to listen, to understand, and be empathetic. Justine is understandably very protective over her kids and she starts to cry. Michael goes over there and hugs her to console her. In his ITM, he says that he loves his mom and his sister. They were very dominant figures in his life, but now he's married. He has Justine. Justine is his wife and she is his new family and I absolutely agree with him. I feel like once you get married, you have to reprioritize the people in your life. Like you, your own family comes first. You know what I mean? That's weird. I don't mean to say, oh, like I'm going to push my parents to the side like you don't matter anymore, but like I would prioritize my husband and his needs and then my parents. Does that make sense? I really hope that the women in his life figure out a way to get along, especially considering that Justine and Maria, aka Michael's mom, used to be friends and uh, they should all go to group therapy and work it out. It's so different when you have a third party, non-biased person who can facilitate your conversations and like help you, exp um, oh my God, what am I thinking of? Why am I having so many brain farts? I feel like there's something wrong in my brain. Express. How did I not think of that word? Should I be worried? Okay, so as I was saying, I feel like a therapist would really help them express themselves in a much effective way. By the way, I was reading all your comments about blended families in my last recap, and thank you so much for sharing all your personal experiences and personal stories. It was very eye-opening. I guess for some reason I just thought a blended family would be so easy, but apparently it's not. Anyway, Michael tells Justine that he wants to see his friend Mocha, and she's like, ugh, like, do you really have to see him? And he's like, yeah, we really want to talk about business and I need to get back into work. By the way, how did I forget or how did I not know that he was a rapper? I totally miss that part. And Mocha is basically his music producer and he wants to help Michael get back into the music scene. But here's a catch. He's like, you need to take off that ring. And Justine's like, oh, no, he's not going to take off that ring. And Mocha's like, yeah, he, he's going to. And I don't know why he's he has to. I mean, no, I do get it. They want to present him as a single man so that the women are attracted to him. And they're like, you know, they have all these hopes and dreams of somehow getting with Michael. I get it. But whatever. I don't know. Just take off the ring then. And it's not a secret that he's married. Like, just take off the ring for the photos. Don't wear it when you're performing or in your music videos. And just wear it every other day. I feel like that works fine, but I don't know if Justine's going to be okay with it. Well, no, we know she's not going to be okay with it because she says no. She's like, no. That's pretty much it for their segment. But I want to know if you had a boyfriend or a girlfriend or a partner, whatever, and they had to come off as a single person, would you be okay with it? Let me know in the comments. Now we're going to talk about my favorite couple, Monique and Derek. So Monique and Derek ended up going to that casino because remember Derek was like, I want to go to the casino. I want to go to the casino. And so Monique finally got up and went. And apparently he couldn't get in because he didn't have a proper ID. And so he took out his frustration on my girl Monique. No, 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 no. I am not okay with that. 
So then they go to the bank because he wants to open up a bank account. And the bank employee is like, hey, I need two forms of ID. And Derek only has one. So Derek is like, hey, Monique, can you uh, pull up that picture of my birth certificate that I emailed you the other day? So Monique opens up her phone. She's scrolling, 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 (laughs) searching for that birth certificate. And he's growing impatient. He's like, oh, it should be in your email. Like, what is taking you so long? Hurry up. And she's like, I'm looking, I'm looking. And he's like, focus, come on. You should have it in your email. You're moving so slow. I swear you move a lot faster. Thank you. Is that a- what did you just say? Ooh, if I were there, I would have chucked my phone in his face and I would have been like, then you look for it, you little bitch. I'm sorry, but that pissed me off, okay? Shouldn't he have prepared everything? He should have called the bank ahead of time and been like, hello, I'd like to open up a bank account. What do I need? And then he should have prepared all of that before he went to the bank. She finds the birth certificate. The bank employee is setting up his bank account. And then he asks Derek, oh, do you invest in crypto? And he's like, no, but I did help my friend get her money. And Monique's like, her? Her money? Who? Who? Who's her? And he's like, no, don't worry. Like, it's my cousin's friend. Do you still talk to her? And he's like, no, no, it's fine. Who was her? My cousin's. No, yeah, it's my cousin's friend. You don't know to worry about. Oh. You still talk to her? No, I haven't no. talked to her. Oh, yeah. Now, next on their to-do list is to go to the gym and get a gym membership. So they're in the car. Monique's driving because, like, Duh, she's his Uber driver and his personal assistant and his walking ATM. (laughs) And during the drive, his sister keeps calling Monique and she wants to talk to her brother because apparently he still hasn't given out his cell phone number to his family. She's calling and calling. Monique's not answering. And Derek answers the phone and he's like, listen, like, don't take it personally. I just want to figure out my life first. And I really am only giving my phone number to the people who were there for me during jail. And so... They get off the phone amicably, amicably, amicably. I thought everything was fine, but then Monique gets this long, nasty text message from his sister, pretty much blaming her for Derek not wanting to talk to her. And Monique's like, look what your sister texted me. And he goes, no, I don't want to read it. And then she's about to like rage text her back. And then he stops her. He's like, don't get involved. Don't get involved. Okay, let's just work out. So do you want to see the text your sister just sent me? I don't feel like seeing that. Um, this is my sexy word. Well, I'm going to show you anyway. I don't want to talk about that. Well, I'm that. No, don't even respond. Leave it alone. Leave it alone. Why you want to even get caught up in that energy? I'm not going to get caught up in that energy. Just leave it alone. She's not Keep texting my Let's work out. So they start working out together and I thought it was really cute. And uh, Derek wants to be a personal trainer. And I'm thinking, how the hell is Monique ever going to let him go to work? I feel like Monique is the type of girl to go to his job without him knowing to make sure that he's not working with any girls. Well, good luck with that. (laughs) Anyway, Monique's like, I think I should move out here so that we can like be together, live together and work out together. And he's like, no, 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 no. There's going to be way too much drama with my sisters. Speaking of drama, his other sister posted on Instagram a picture of Derek with the caption, where are all the bad bitches at? My brother just came home from doing nine years and he needs them. Basically completely disregarding Monique and their relationship. So Monique responds to the post and they get into this Instagram comment war. Derek's like, please just ignore it. Don't respond to it. And Monique's like, how am I supposed to see this and not respond? Listen, I get it. It is infuriating, especially because his sisters are relentless. They're mean. But what Monique needs to realize is that his sisters are thirsty, thirsty trolls. And what is the number one rule when it comes to trolls? Do not feed them. And Monique gets hot-headed too. She's like, I'm ready to fight them. And he's like, please don't do that. I could get in trouble and go back to jail. But she is not backing down. She's so heated. She's so pissed. And I kind of agree with Derek here. I feel like he knows his sisters and he knows that they're not going to back down and they're just going to keep trolling over and over again. And so the best way to handle them is for Monique to just ignore them. But I also get that from Monique's point of view, maybe she just wanted Derek to like stand up for her and just kind of say something to his sisters like leave her alone, you know? Even though it doesn't work, I don't know. Derek's cousin calls Monique and lets them know that 
he needs to go visit their grandma because she's not doing well. And so they head over to the hospital. I think it's the hospital. I'm not sure. Wherever his grandma is. And he goes inside and she's in the car. And she notices there's a police car driving around and around. The producers and the cameramen, they go into Monique's car. And I'm like, oh, they're breaking the fourth wall. It's so exciting. Then Derek gets into the backseat. Monique starts driving and he's like, oh, shit, keep driving, keep driving. Someone's following us. And the cameraman in the front seat, he looks like he's about to shit his pants. Derek's like, keep driving, keep driving. And Monique's like, who is that? I'm about to stop and kick their ass. And the producer is like, do not stop. Keep driving. Monique's freaking out. She's like, oh my God, I'm scared. Who's following us? And that's where it ends. (laughs) Well, let's just go over to this gas station. Let's pull in here. We're coming. No, 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 But I don't know if I like Cameron. I think he has some funny things to say, but as a romantic partner for Eris, eh, not really. Because, like, Eris is so beautiful. She seems smart. And I just don't know why... Like, I feel like she could do better. Uh, No shade to Cameron. But yeah, Cameron ended up going back to jail because he failed a breathalyzer test 13 days before he was supposed to be released. Like, come on. Anyway, when she goes to pick him up, he proposes and she says yes. So yay, good luck. (laughs) All right, let's talk about Chris and Gabby. So remember Chris is in New Jersey to meet up with Gabby because he's going to live with her and parole at her apartment. But she tells him that she's not going to pick him up anymore because he's been talking to other women behind her back. So he's like, all right, then I'm just going to go back to New York. And she's like, surprise, I'm here. And then she confronts him about all those phone calls that he made to different women when he was in the halfway house. And Gabby, oh my God, she not only got a record of all the incoming and outgoing calls from his phone, she called all the phone numbers. That way she confirmed that a lot of them were women. Damn, she is not playing around. So then she's like, all right, well, let's go to my apartment. And then he's like, where's the car? And she's like, we're going to walk because the car's in the shop. And he's like, why is it in the shop? And she's like, it's just in the shop, okay? They're fighting over the car being in the shop. You came here to play more games? You want to find Jersey bitches? Damn, that's how you feeling, though? That's how you feeling yourself? Mm Mm-hmm. Get up. Hey, yo, where's the car at? There's nothing wrong with it. It's in the shop. For what? Like, What's for the what? problem? It's getting fixed. That's what cars go in the shop for, to get fixed. It's always something. Okay, Everything always well, it's fixed. in the shop. It's in the shop. So it's either you're going to walk the five blocks or what you're going to do. Um, They get to the apartment and then she realizes that he's not wearing the wedding ring. So she's like, where's your wedding ring? And he's like, I threw it out. And she's like, well, I threw mine out too. Okay, so they fight about that. And when I was watching them fight, it was very uncomfortable, very uncomfortable. They're just not good for each other. They're so toxic. And honestly, this is where they should have broken up right then and there. They accuse each other of cheating. They argue again. According to Chris, Gabby spent all his money on her apartment, her clothes, her bags, plastic surgery, and he's pretty mad about that. Although I do have to say Gabby is defending herself. She says that he did not pay for anything and that she paid for everything. So I don't know. Who knows? Only they know the truth. Ashley and Travis go on a field trip to the beach because he's always wanted to hunt for treasure. And so he gets one of those metal detector thingy-majigs and he starts hunting for gold or whatever the fuck those gadgets do. I don't know. Yeah, he looks like he's having fun. Whatever. So then Ashley's like, guess what, baby? I got us a boat for tonight. And she starts crying because apparently she has a secret about her business that she hasn't told him yet. She said that the business is not doing as well as he thinks he is. So I think like she's not making any money, but he thinks they're going to make a ton of money and be rich and live in a mansion and have like five babies and five nannies. I don't know. And she doesn't want to tell him yet because she just doesn't want him to stress yet. They still have a boat ride to go on. There's something I haven't told Travis about the business. I'm not going to tell him today. I don't want him to worry about anything. So they go on the boat, they have a beer, and they talk about their dreams and their futures of running a jewelry empire together. And then Ashley cries again. Yeah. 
I'm gonna go to jewelry school. I can't wait to start that. We're gonna kill it down here as far as business. Yep. Both of us together, tag team in the competition. Mm -hmm. It's okay. <laughs> the beginning of the lap. No. Nathan and Skyler. I haven't talked about them since the first recap. So here's what you need to know. She came home from jail. She's living at his grandma's house, I think. And she's used to like luxury living and bougie, bougie, bougie. So she's not really happy about the living situation. She thinks it's really old and gross. And she's like, oh my God, I can't live here. It's morning time and Nathan prepares breakfast for her. What is this? It looks like meatloaf surrounded by half-eaten oranges. He tells her that he went to a hotel and stole food from their complimentary breakfast. How romantic. Oh my god, I guess he spent all the money that he had on her ring that he couldn't even go to Dunkin' Donuts and like get a wake-up wrap. Nathan's gonna go to work and Skylar's gonna get her hair done with her bestie from jail. And he's super worried and not too happy about them getting together because, uh, hello, they could get in trouble and go back to jail. Skylar's like, don't worry, I'll be fine. So she's at her hair appointment and she realizes, hey, he did not text me once and he's usually the guy to text me right away. So she's like, yeah, he's acting really different. And Gracie, her bestie, she's like, yeah, I think you guys need to like really build some trust. Okay, so I guess she needs to start looking for a job and Nathan made it clear that he doesn't want her to go back to working at the country club because there are a lot of rich men. Gracie wants to share her wisdom with us and she says, I don't think it's the best idea for two recovering addicts to be with each other. Like, something bad could happen. Yeah, no shit. So Skylar keeps texting him and he's not responding. She keeps texting, no response. Text, no response. So she's starting to get really anxious because she has PTSD from her last two boyfriends who died from ODing. Um, she goes back to the house and... She's like, oh my God. But we don't know what that means. So we'll find out in the next episode, which is actually tomorrow, which is crazy because I watched this episode last Friday and had the recap done the next day, Saturday. But somehow, I don't know, I was like in a weird mental space and I just kept procrastinating making this video like day after day. And then now it's already Thursday. What the fork? All right, so I cannot wait to watch tomorrow's episode. Yeah, I will talk to y'all soon. Bye.